very long days ahead of them as they wait to see if what they have done is enough. I believe we're an NCAA tournament team. We just ran into a buzzsaw with Michigan, but I don't think that undoes what we've already accomplished. And what we've done is we've won games away from home. We've beaten the teams that we should be, with maybe one exception. And to go through that type of season where you have to win, I think we won eight out of our last nine. At the end of the day, if quad one is the holy grail, that's a tough deal. But I don't think quad one is the holy grail. There's, there's top 100 wins in quad three. And so, you know, you just have to see where it goes. Husker head coach Tim Miles joins us now uh, from Lincoln. Tim, let's start with a topic that has been widely discussed over the past couple of weeks, your team's tournament resume. You and I spoke at length in New York City about the way that teams are assessed by the committee, and it's kind of bizarre. You lose to Michigan, which hurts you perception-wise, but Michigan goes on to win it, so your victory over them during the regular season becomes more valuable. It seems counterintuitive. Are we assessing this the right way? <clears throat> Well, here's what I know. We're in. And that, that's what I know. I don't care what old Howie, what's his name, your bracketologist guy says. He's full of it. You know, <laughs> I, I honestly think that, that, that we're in. I mean, I just look at so many things. And the first thing I look at is that a 13-win Big Ten team, there's been 61 of them. All 61 have been in. You, there's just no bad teams in our league. Nobody outside the top 135 of BPI. There, there's just... You, every game you have to play, you have to win. And, and, and I really believe we're in. I think our strength of rec record metric is really good. In fact, I do know it's better than 17 other teams that are either safely in or on the bubble. Um, I mean, I think we're way in. As everybody is learning, I learned this week, Tim Miles is a math guy, too. He, he's not just a basketball coach. W will you bring up the strength of schedule, Tim? And that's been one of the things that's been held against you, not your overall strength of schedule, but inside the Big Ten. Of course, everybody should know that it is not within your power to decide who you play once and who you play twice. You only played Michigan State once. You only played Ohio State once, Purdue once. You got Michigan in the one time that you got them. So... How should that be assessed when the committee goes and looks at who you played inside the league? Well, there's no doubt there was some lack of opportunity for us. You know, I look at it like this. You know, Michigan State was 8-1 in the league at home, 16-1 overall. Ohio State, 8-1, 16-2 overall. Purdue, 8-1, 16-1 in the league. The Huskers were 9-0 and 16-1 and in the league. I really think any of those teams that come to our place, we would have the opportunity to beat them, and it looks like we would have. I mean, we match up and align that way, but just because of the, you know, the way the schedule broke, we didn't have those opportunities. You also beat Minnesota early in the year, and this is a great then versus now debate because when you beat the Gophers, they were almost completely whole. They had Reggie Lynch. They hadn't been crushed by injuries, by suspensions. Then they go in the tank because of those things, and so your win becomes less valuable according to the quad one, quad two formula. Should the committee be assessing based on what happened at the time of the game as opposed to how it stands now? Well, I, I believe that those committee members will look at that as a high-level win, you know, uh, because we played the game. It happened. Now, that's not to say the same thing. Providence is sitting there, and they're in a situation where they lost to Minnesota at that same team, and they're showing out as a bad loss, uh, like a quad four loss. That shouldn't be shown there either. And that's an all equity and fairness to everybody involved. But we beat an excellent Minnesota team. If that's not a top 50, top 100 win, if you just look at the old general terms they used to use, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, but it's certainly not a quad three win or quad four win or whatever it looks as it is now. So when I, when I, when I look at things, I believe that the committee made up of a lot of administrators, people who know the business, been around coaches, some that were coaches. You know, we're still receiving votes in the coaches' poll. I think you look at John Beeline and Tom Izzo, all these guys are saying that's a tournament team. You know, we, we go beyond the eye test. Uh, I think the proof's in the pudding. We lost out on some opportunity. You know, I'm not sure that one shot that Kansas takes to beat us makes 15 other teams leapfrog us in this tournament. That's a great point, as is the point that you brought up about the fact that teams don't get kept out of the tournament if they win 13 games in a Power 5 league. A couple of years ago, the NIT went to a really interesting model for non-Power 5 teams. 
they almost always have to win their league to get in. If they don't do that, but they won the regular season, they're automatically in the NIT. Should the NCAA consider looking at Power 5 leagues and stating that if you win a certain percentage of games, and you would certainly qualify this year, you won more than 70 inside the Big Ten percent-wise, those teams should gain entry to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, that's a good good question. I haven't thought much about that one. I'd have to put some thought into it because I'm not very bright, Rick. You know, I graduated uh, I number seven in my that. high school. Now, Dolan High School, there was 13 of us, and I graduated number seven in my class. So, you know, that is as average as you can possibly be. But I do know this. I, I don't think that the – I think once your regular season is over, your metrics should be done. Then I think as you play for the conference championship, you have an opportunity to play. Um, and I, I just don't think that, you know, there's that much to be gained metric-wise uh, with conference tournaments. The conference tournaments to crown your AQ, uh, your automatic qualifier, your, your, your tournament champion, and let it just be that. And then work from the numbers of, uh, of, of the work of your regular season. And I think we've got enough in our regular season to be in. And, Tim, so much of it does come back to strength of schedule. And it was just announced today that your non-conference schedule will get a boost in 2018. You're playing in the Hall of Fame Classic, Texas Tech, Missouri State, USC, also going to be involved in that event. Your thoughts on being part of that field? Yeah, I think it'll be a great event. You know, Chris Beard's got a, an excellent team. Uh, I mean, they're going to be really, really good. Uh, I'm excited about uh, being down in Kansas City. It's a huge uh, area for Husker fans. You know, the Royals have their own Nebraska Day, uh, which the, basically everybody uh, wears the Nebraska red, and uh, grudgingly the Royals allow us. So it, it's really a, a cool event down there, and it, it's one that I wanted to be a part of with the college basketball uh, Hall of Fame down in that area, and the CBE, the, the, the basketball experience right there, too, the Hall of Fame Museum. I think it's going to be a, a pretty cool event for us. Husker head coach Tim Miles making a very convincing case for Nebraska's entry as an at-large team into this year's NCAA tournament. And a little birdie told me, Tim, that maybe, maybe not Pink may be performing at Pinnacle Bank Arena tonight. <laughs> if you happen to go, I'm just saying, if you happen to go, enjoy it. Thank you very much.